Copula, linguistics. In linguistics, a copula, plural, copulas or copulae, abbreviated, is a word used to link the subject of a sentence with a predicate, a subject complement, such as the word is in the sentence the sky is blue. The word copula derives from the Latin noun for a link or tie that connects two different things. A copula is often a verb or a verb-like word, though this is not universally the case. A verb that is a copula is sometimes called a copulative or copular verb. In English primary education grammar courses, a copula is often called a linking verb. In other languages, copulas show more resemblances to pronouns, as in classical Chinese and Guarani, or may take the form of suffixes attached to a noun, as in Bisha and Inuit languages. Most languages have one main copula, although some, such as Spanish, Portuguese and Thai, have more than one and some have none. In the case of English, this is the verb to be. While the term copula is generally used to refer to such principal forms, it may also be used to refer to some other verbs with similar functions, like become, get, feel and seem in English, these may also be called semi-copulas or pseudo-copulas. The principal use of a copula is to link the subject of a clause to the predicate. A copular verb is often considered to be part of the predicate, the remainder being called a predicative expression. A simple clause containing a copula is illustrated below in that sentence, the noun phrase the book is the subject, the verb is serves as the copula, and the prepositional phrase on the table is the predicative expression. The whole expression is on the table may, in some theories of grammar, be called a predicate or a verb phrase. The predicative expression accompanying the copula, also known as the complement of the copula, may take any of several possible forms, it may be a noun or noun phrase, an adjective or adjective phrase, a prepositional phrase, as above, or another adverb or adverbial phrase expressing time or location. Examples are given below, with the copula in bold and the predicative expression in italics. The three components, subject, copula and predicative expression, do not necessarily appear in that order, their positioning depends on the rules for word order applicable to the language in question. In English, an SVO language, the ordering given is the normal one, but here too, certain variation is possible. It is also possible, in certain circumstances, for one, or even two, of the three components to be absent. In verse copular constructions, in which the positions of the predicative expression and the subject are reversed, are found in various languages. They have been the subject of much theoretical analysis, particularly in regard to the difficulty of maintaining. In the case of such sentences, the usual division into a subject noun phrase and a predicate verb phrase. Another issue is verb agreement when both subject and predicative expression are noun phrases, and differ in number or person. In English, the copula normally agrees with the preceding phrase even if it is not logically the subject, as in the cause of the riot is, not are, these pictures of the wall. Compare Italian la causa della rivolta sono, are, not is, quest photo del moro. The precise definition and scope of the concept of a copula is not necessarily precise in any language. For example, in English though the concept of the copula is most strongly associated with the verb be, there are many other verbs that can be used in a copular sense as well. For example, and even more tenuously, predicates formed using a copula may express identity, that the two noun phrases, subject and complement, have the same referent or express an identical concept they may also express membership of a class or a subset relationship. Similarly they may express some property, relation or position, permanent or temporary. Other special uses of copular verbs are described in some of the following sections. Some languages use different copulas, or different syntax, when denoting a permanent, essential characteristic of something and when denoting a temporary state. For examples, see the sections on the Romance languages, Slavic languages and Irish. In many languages the principal copula is a verb, such as English, to, be, German sign, mixed teku, toregimus, etc. It may inflect for grammatical categories such as tense, aspect and mood, like other verbs in the language. As a very commonly used verb, it is likely that the copula has irregular inflected forms. In English, the verb be has a number of highly irregular suppletive, forms and has more different inflected forms than any other English verb, am, is, are, was, were, etc., see English verbs for detail. Other copulas show more resemblances to pronouns. That is the case for classical Chinese and Guarani, for instance. In highly synthetic languages, 
Copulas are often suffixes, attached to a noun, but they may still behave otherwise like ordinary verbs, you in Inuit languages. In some other languages, such as Pesha and Kent, the copula takes the form of suffixes that attach to a noun but are distinct from the person agreement marker system on predicative verbs. This phenomenon is known as nonverbal person agreement, or nonverbal subject agreement, and the relevant markers are always established as deriving from politicized independent pronouns. For cases in which the copula is omitted or takes zero form, see below. A copular verb may also have other uses supplementary to or distinct from its uses as a copula. The English copular verb be can be used as an auxiliary verb, expressing passive voice, together with the past participle, or expressing progressive aspect together with the present participle. Other languages copulas have additional uses as auxiliaries. For example, French etre can be used to express passive voice similarly to English be. And both French etre and German sign are used to express the perfect forms of certain verbs. The last usage was formerly prevalent in English also. The auxiliary functions of these verbs derive from their copular function, and can be interpreted as a special case of the copular function, the verbal form that follows it being considered adjectival. Another auxiliary type usage of the copula in English is together with the to infinitive to denote an obligatory action or expected occurrence. I am to serve you, the manager is to resign. It can be put also into past tense, we were to leave at 9. For forms like if I was slash were to come, see English conditional sentences. Note that by certain criteria, the English copula be may always be considered an auxiliary verb, see diagnostics for identifying auxiliary verbs in English. The English to be, and its equivalents in certain other languages, also have a non-copular use as an existential verb, meaning to exist. This use is illustrated in the following sentences, I want only to be, and that is enough, I think therefore I am, to be or not to be, that is the question. In these cases, the verb itself expresses a predicate, that of existence, rather than linking to a predicative expression as it does when used as a copula. In ontology it is sometimes suggested that the is of existence is reducible to the is of property attribution or class membership, to be, Aristotle held, is to be something. However, Abelard in his dialectica made a reductio ad absurdum argument against the idea that the copula can express existence. Similar examples can be found in many other languages, for example, the French and Latin equivalents of I think therefore I am are je pense, donc je suis and cogito ergo sum, where sui and sum are the equivalents of English am, normally used as copulas. However, other languages prefer a different verb for existential use, as in the Spanish version pienso, luego existo where the verb existir to exist is used rather than the copula ser or estad to be. Another type of existential usage is in clauses of the there is, or there are, type. Languages differ in the way they express such meanings, some of them use the copular verb, possibly with an expletive pronoun like the English there, while other languages use different verbs and constructions, like the French ilye, which uses parts of the verb avoir to have, not the copula etra, or the Swedish Finns, the passive voice of the verb for to find. For details, see existential clause. Relying on a unified theory of copular sentences, it has been proposed that the English their sentences are subtypes of inverse copular constructions. In some languages, copula omission occurs within a particular grammatical context. For example, speakers of Russian, Indonesian, Turkish, Hungarian, Arabic, Hebrew, and Quechuan languages consistently drop the copula in present tense, Russian, Yachelovic I, M A, person, Indonesian, Syasirang Manusia I, am, a human, Turkish, O Insan S slash he, is a, human, Hungarian, O Ember, S slash he, is, a human, Arabic, Aninsan, I, M A, human, Hebrew, Aniadam I, M A, human, Southern Quechua, Pekarunam S slash he, is, a human. The usage is known generically as the zero copula. Note that in other tenses, sometimes in forms other than third person singular, the copula usually reappears. Some languages drop the copula in poetic or aphorismic contexts. Examples in English include such poetic copula dropping is more pronounced in some languages other than English, such as the Romance languages. In informal speech of English, the copula may also be dropped in general sentences, as in she a nurse. It is a feature of African-American vernacular English, but is also used by a variety of other English speakers in informal contexts.
An example is the sentence I saw twelve men, each a soldier. In ancient Greek, when an adjective precedes a noun with an article, the copula is understood, omicron kappa omicron sigma sigma tau mu alpha kappa rho sigma, the house is large, can be written mu alpha kappa rho sigma omicron kappa omicron sigma, large the house, is. In Quechua, southern Quechua used for the examples, zero copula is restricted to present tense in third person singular, con, pecorunum, s has a human, but, pecuna, runicunum concu, they, are human. In Maori, the zero copula can be used in predicative expressions and with continuous verbs, many of which take a copulative verb in many Indo-European languages, he knew te fare, literally a big the house, the house, is, big, I te 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 puka puka, literally at, past locative particle, the table the book, the book, was, on the table, no ingarangi ya, literally from England, as he, as he, is, from England, k te kai o, literally at the, act of, eating I, I, am, eating. Alternatively, in many cases, the particle co can be used as a copulative, though not all instances of co are used as thus, like all other Maori particles, co has multiple purposes, ko nui te fare the house is big, ko te puka puka ke te tipu it is the book, that is, on the table, ko o ke te kai it is me eating. However, when expressing identity or class membership, ko must be used. Kodanai ta kupuka puka this is my book, koata tahi hi taunei a te waibonamu Christchurch is a city in the South Island, of New Zealand, kokoto kuhoi you are my friend. Note that when expressing identity, ko can be placed on either object in the clause without changing the meaning, kodanai ta kupuka puka is the samias kota kupuka puka tanai, but not on both, kodanai kota kupuka puka would be equivalent to saying it is this, it is my book in English. In Hungarian, Zero copula is restricted to present tense in third person singular in plural, o ember, o k emberic, s slash he is a human, they are humans, but, n, ember vajok I am a human, t, ember waggy you are a human, me emberic vagyunk we are humans, t, emberic vagidic you all are humans. The copula also reappears for stating locations, os emberic a husband banic, the people are in the house, and for stating time, hater a van, it is six o'clock. However, the copula may be omitted in colloquial language, hetora, van, it is six o'clock. Hungarian uses copula lenai for expressing location itt van Robert Bob is here, but it is omitted in the third person present tense for attribution or identity statements Robert Eric Bob is old, okay hesk they are hungry, Katie Niel Tudos Kathy is a linguist, but Robert Eric Volt Bob was old, e hesk Voltak they were hungry, Katie Niel Tudos Volt Kathy was a linguist. In Turkish, both the third person singular and the third person plural copulas are omittable. Ali Barada and Ali Buradat are both mean Ali is here, and Onlar as an Onlar Isler both mean they are hungry. Both of the sentences are acceptable and grammatically correct, but sentences with a copula are more formal. The Turkish first person singular copula suffix is omitted when introducing oneself. Bora ben, I am Bora, is grammatically correct, but Bora ben im, same sentence with a copula is not for an introduction, but is grammatically correct in other cases. Further restrictions may apply before omission is permitted. For example, in the Irish language, is, the present tense of the copula, may be omitted when the predicate is a noun. Ba, the past slash conditional, cannot be deleted. If the present copula is omitted, the pronoun e, e, i at preceding the noun is omitted as well. Sometimes, the term copula is taken to include not only a language's equivalence to the verb be but also other verbs or forms that serve to link a subject to a predicative expression, while adding semantic content of their own. For example, English verbs such as become, get, feel, look, taste, smell, and seem can have this function, as in the following sentences, the predicative expression, the complement of the verb, is in italics. Some verbs have rarer, secondary uses as copular verbs, such as the verb fall in sentences like the zebra fell victim to the lion. These extra copulas are sometimes called semi-copulas or pseudo-copulas. For a list of common verbs of this type in English, see List of English Copulae. In Indo-European languages, the words meaning to be are sometimes similar to each other. Due to the high frequency of their use, their inflection retains a considerable degree of similarity in some cases. Thus, for example, 
The English form is is a cognate of Germanist, Latin A, Persianist and Russian no wiki just less than slash no wiki even though the Germanic, Italic, Iranian and Slavic language groups split at least 3,000 years ago. The origins of the copulas of most Indo European languages can be traced back to four Proto Indo European stems S, Hes, Sta, Shti, Wesenbu, Bu. The English copular verb B has eight forms, more than any other English verb B, am, is, are, being, was, were, been. Additional archaic forms include art, wast, wert, and occasionally based as a subjunctive. For more details see English verbs. For the etymology of the various forms, see Indo-European copula. The main uses of the copula in English are described in the above sections. The possibility of copula emission is mentioned under. A particular construction found in English, particularly in speech, is the use of two successive copulas when only one appears necessary, as in my point is, is that. The acceptability of this construction is a disputed matter in English prescriptive grammar. The simple English copula be may on occasion be substituted by other verbs with near identical meanings. In Persian the verb to be can either take the form of est in the form of English is or budin in the form of to be. Copulas in the Romance languages usually consist of two different verbs that can be translated as to be, the main one from the Latin esse, via vulgar Latin essere, esse deriving from s, often referenced to some another of the Latin verb's principal parts, and a secondary one from stare, from sta, often referenced as sto, another of that Latin verb's principal parts. The resulting distinction in the modern forms is found in all the Iberian Romance languages, and to a lesser extent Italian, but not in French or Romanian. The difference is that the first usually refers to essential characteristics, while the second refers to states and situations, for example, Bob is old versus Bob is well. A similar division is found in the non-Romance Basque language, viz. Egon and Azen. Note that the English words just used, essential and state, are also cognate with the Latin infinitives esse and stare. The word ste also comes from Latin stare, through Middle French este, stem of Old French ester, in Spanish and Portuguese, the high degree of verbal inflection, plus the existence of two copulas, ser and estad, means that there are 105, Spanish, and 110. Portuguese, separate forms to express the copula, compared to eight in English and one in Chinese. In some cases, the verb itself changes the meaning of the adjective slash sentence. The following examples are from Portuguese. Some Slavic languages make a distinction between essence and state, similar to that discussed in the above section on the Romance languages, by putting a predicative expression denoting a state into the instrumental case. And essential characteristics are in the nominative. This can apply with other copula verbs as well. The verbs for become are normally used with the instrumental case. As noted above under, Russian and other East Slavic languages generally omit the copula in the present tense. In Irish and Scottish Gaelic, there are two copulas, and the syntax is also changed when one is distinguishing between states or situations and essential characteristics. Describing the subject's state or situation typically uses the normal VSO ordering with the verb be. The copula is is used to state essential characteristics or equivalences. The word is is the copula, rhymes with the English word miss. The pronoun used with the copula is different from the normal pronoun. For a masculine singular noun, is used, for he or it, as opposed to the normal pronoun say, for a feminine singular noun, is used, for she or it, as opposed to normal pronoun see. For plural nouns, iad is used, for they or those, as opposed to the normal pronoun siad. To describe being in a state, condition, place, or act, the verb to be is used, Tommy Agarith. I am running. In Chichewa, a Bantu language spoken mainly in Malawi, a very similar distinction exists between permanent and temporary states as in Spanish and Portuguese, but only in the present tense. For a permanent state, in the third person, the copula used in the present tense is ndi, negative c. For the first and second persons the particle ndi is combined with pronouns, for example in i. For temporary states and location, the copula is the appropriate form of the defective verb li. For the first and second persons the person is shown, as normally with chichewa verbs, by the appropriate pronominal prefix. In the past tenses, li is used for both types of copula. In the future, subjunctive or conditional tenses, a form of the verb kala, sit slash dwell, is used as a copula. Uniquely, 
the existence of the copulative verbalizer suffix in the southern Peruvian Amaran language variety, Milac Amara, is evident only in the surfacing off a vowel that would otherwise have been deleted because of the presence of a following suffix, lexically pre-specified to suppress it. As the copulative verbalizer has no independent phonetic structure, it is represented by the Greek letter V in the examples used in this entry. Accordingly, unlike in most other Amaran variants, whose copulative verbalizer is expressed with a vowel lengthening component, dash, the presence of the copulated verbalizer in Milak Aymara is often not apparent on the surface at all and is analyzed as existing only metalinguistically. However, it is also relevant to note that in a verb phrase like it is old, the noun thantha meaning old does not require the copulated verbalizer, thantha why it is old. It is now pertinent to make some observations about the distribution of the copulative verbalizer. The best place to start is with words in which its presence or absence is obvious. When the vowel suppressing first person simple tense suffix attaches to a verb, the vowel of the immediately preceding suffix is suppressed in the examples in this subsection. The subscript C appears prior to vowel suppressing suffixes in the interlinear gloss to better distinguish instances of deletion had arise from the presence of a lexically pre specified suffix from those that arise from other, for example, phonotactic, motivations. Consider the verb Sara, which is inflected for the first person simple tense and so, predictably, loses its final root vowel, Sara Tiwa Iga. However, prior to the suffixation of the first person simple suffix, T to the same root nominalized with the agentive nominalizer, iri, the word must be verbalized. The fact that the final vowel of, iri below is not suppressed indicates the presence of an intervening segment, the copulative verbalizer, sara iri v t y i usually go. It is worthwhile to compare the copulative verbalizer in Milak Imara as compared to La Paz Imara, a variant which represents this suffix with vowel lengthening. Consider the near identical sentences below. Both translations of I have a small house in which the nominal root Buddha ni house attributive is verbalized with the copulative verbalizer, but note that the correspondence between the copulative verbalizer and these two variants is not always a strict own to one relation. As in English, the verb to be, kapna, is irregular in Georgian, a Kartvelian language, different verb roots are employed in different tenses. The roots, are, not, kaf, and, kop, past participle, are used in the present tense future tense, past tense and the perfective tenses respectively. Examples Note that, in the last two examples, perfective and pluperfect, two roots are used in one verb compound. In the perfective tense, the root cop, which is expected root for the perfective tense, is followed by the root r, which is the root for the present tense. In the pluperfective tense, again, the root cop is followed by the past tense root cough. This formation is very similar to German, an Indo-European language, where the perfect and the pluperfect are expressed in the following way. Here, Gusen is the past participle of sign, to be, in German. In both examples, as in Georgian, this participle is used together with the present and the past forms of the verb in order to conjugate for the perfect and the pluperfect aspects. Haitian Creole, a French-based Creole language, has three forms of the copula, say, ye and the zero copula, no word at all, the position of which will be indicated with O, just for purposes of illustration. Although no textual record exists of Haitian Creole at its earliest stages of development from French, say is derived from French, written say, which is the normal French contraction of, that, written say, and the copula, is, written a, a form of the verb etre. The derivation of E is less obvious, but we can assume that the French source was, he slash it is written ile, which, in rapidly spoken French, is very commonly pronounced as, typically written ya. The use of a zero copula is unknown in French, and it is thought to be an innovation from the early days when Haitian Creole was first developing as a romance-based pigeon. Latin also sometimes used a zero copula. Which of say, ye, o is used in any given copula clause depends on complex syntactic factors that we can superficially summarize in the following thurls. One. Use o, i.e., no word at all, in declarative sentences where the complement is an adjective phrase, prepositional phrase, or adverb phrase. 2. Use say when the complement is a noun phrase. But note that, whereas other verbs come after any tense slash mood slash aspect particles, like pa to mark negation, or te to explicitly mark past tense, or ap to mark progressive aspect, say comes before any such particles. 3. 
You say where French and English have a dummy at subject. 4. Finally, use the other copula for me in situations where the sentence's syntax leaves the copula at the end of a phrase. The above is, however, only a simplified analysis. Japanese has copulae that are most often translated as the to be verb of English. The Japanese copula has many forms. The words to and des are used to predicate sentences, while na and da are particles used within sentences to modify or connect. Japanese sentences with copulas most often equate one thing with another, that is, they are of the form A is B. Examples The difference between da and desu appears simple. For instance, desu is more formal and polite than da. Thus, many sentences such as the ones below are almost identical in meaning and differ in the speaker's politeness to the addressee and in nuance of how assured the person is of their statement. However, Desu may never come before the end of a sentence, and is used exclusively to delineate subordinate clauses. Japanese sentences may be predicated with copulas or with verbs. However, desu may not always be a predicate. In some cases, its only function is to make a sentence predicated with a state of verb more polite. However, da always functions as a predicate, so it cannot be combined with a state of verb, because sentences need only one predicate. See the examples below. There are several theories as to the origin of desu, one is that it is a shortened form of daarimasu, which is a polite form of daaru. In general, both forms are used in only writing in more formal situations. Another form, dagozaimasu, which is the more formal version of daarimasu, in the etymological sense a conjugation of dagosaru in an honorific suffix, masu, is also used in some situations and is very polite. Note that daaru and dagosaru are considered to be compounds of a particle da, and existential verbs aru and gosaru. Desu may be pronounced shu in colloquial speech. The copula is subject to dialectal variation throughout Japan, resulting in forms such as ya in Kansai and John Hiroshima, see map above. Japanese also has two verbs corresponding to English to be, aru and iru. They are not copulas but existential verbs. Aru is used for inanimate objects, including plants whereas ear was used for animate things like people, animals, and robots, though there are exceptions to this generalization. Japanese speakers, when learning English, often drop the auxiliary verbs be and do, incorrectly believing that be is a semantically empty copula equivalent to odesu and de. For sentences with predicate nominatives, the copula, I, is added to the predicate nominative, with no space in between. Some adjectives, usually color adjectives, are nominalized and used with the copula, I. 1. Without the copula, I. 2. With the copula, I. Some Korean adjectives are derived using the copula. Separating these articles and nominalizing the former part will often result in a sentence with a related, but different meaning. Using the separated sentence in a situation where the UN separated sentence is appropriate is usually acceptable as the listener can decide what the speaker is trying to say using the context. In Chinese, both states and qualities are, in general, expressed with stative verbs, sv, with no need for a copula, for example, in Chinese, to be tired, lay, to be hungry, e, to be located at, zai, to be stupid, ben and so forth. A sentence can consist simply of a pronoun and such a verb, for example, wooey, I'm hungry. Usually, however, verbs expressing qualities are qualified be an adverb, meaning very, not, quite, etc., when not otherwise qualified, they are often preceded by hen, which in other contexts means very, but in this use often has no particular meaning. See also Chinese adjectives, and Chinese grammar. Only sentences with a noun is the complement. For example this is my sister, use the copular verb to be, she. This is used frequently, for example, instead of having a verb meaning to be Chinese, the usual expression is to be a Chinese person, wo shi thong war and I am a Chinese person, I am Chinese. This she is sometimes called an equative verb. Another possibility is for the complement to be just a noun modifier, ending in da, the noun being omitted, wo kwai shi hongs to my car is, a, red, one. Before the Han Dynasty, the character served as a demonstrative pronoun meaning this, this usage survives in some idioms and proverb. Some linguists believe that developed into a copula because it often appeared, as a repetitive subject, after the subject of a sentence, in classical Chinese way can say, for example, George W. Bush, this president of the United States meaning George W. Bush is the president of the United States.
the character appears to be formed as a compound of characters with the meanings of early and straight. Another use of in modern Chinese is in combination with the modifier to, to mean yes or to show agreement. For example, question, need a quite shipi yushi hongsta? Is your car red or not? Response, she is, meaning yes, or bi yushi not is, meaning no. A more common way of showing that the person asking the question is correct is by simply saying right or correct, dui, the corresponding negative answer is bu dui, not right, yet another use of is in the shi. Ta construction, which is used to emphasize a particular element of the sentence, see Chinese grammar cleft sentences. In hockey NCX is the copula, and is the equivalent in Wu Chinese. Cantonese uses, chipping, high six, instead of, similarly, hockey uses he. In Sun languages like Lakota, in principle almost all words, according to their structure, are verbs. So not only, transitive, Intransitive and so-called state of verbs but even nouns often behave like verbs and do not need to have copulas. For example, the word wichasa refers to a man, and the verb to be a man is expressed as wimishasa slash winikasa slash wichasa, I am slash you are slash he is a man. Yet there also is a copula echa, to be a, that in most cases is used, wichasa himisha slash henika slash echa, I am slash you are slash he is a man. In order to express the statement I am a doctor of profession, one has to say Pazuta Wichasa Himisha. But, in order to express that that person is th a doctor, say, that had been phoned to help, one must use another copula e to be the one, Pazuta Wichasa, Ki, Mie Yellow, Medicine Men Devardi and the one male assert. In order to refer to space, for example, Robert is in the house, various verbs are used, for example, Yaga, lit, to sit for humans, or ha slash hey, to stand upright, for inanimate objects of a certain shape. Robert is in the house could be translated as Robert de Malyake, yellow, whereas there's one restaurant next to the gas station translates as o odi thippy wiggly oinatsi ki heli sikib wahe. The constructed language lojbin has multiple sorts of copula. The most common, chu, is used to separate any noun phrases before the predicate from the predicate, and is always optional. The others may be used when the other part of the sentence is another noun phrase, but are sometimes viewed with distaste in the Lojban community, because all words that express a predicate can be used as verbs. The three sentences Bob runs, Bob is old, and Bob is a fireman, for instance, would all have the same form in Lojban, La. Bob. Chu Bajra, La. Bob. Chu Tolsitno, and La. Bob. Chu Fagdarpa. There are several such copulas, me turns whatever follows the word me into a verb that means to be what it follows. For example, me la bob, means to be bob. Another copula is do, which is a verb that means all its arguments are the same thing, equal. The E prime language, based on English, simply avoids the issue by not having a generic copula. It requires instead a specific form such as remains, becomes, lies, or equals. Esperanto uses the copula much as English. The infinitive is st, and the whole conjugation is regular, like all other Esperanto verbs. In addition, adjectival roots can be turned into state of verbs, la cello blue is. The sky is blue. Likewise, Edo has a copula that works as English to be. Its infinitive is easer, and, as in Esperanto, all of its forms are regular like all other verbs. The simple present is esos for all persons, the simple past is esos. The simple future is esos, and the imperative is es, among a few more forms. However, Edo also has an alternative irregular form for the simple present, s, which some idists frown upon. The possibility to turn adjectives and even nouns into verbs also exists, although this is mostly done by means of an affix, on top of the verbal endings. The affix is s. So, the sky is blue. Can be said as large yellow blues is. As can be seen. The suffix s plus the verbal desonance s are simply the verb to be annexed to the adjectival or nominal root. Interlingua speakers use copulas with the same freedom as speakers of Slavic, Germanic, and Romance languages. In addition to combinations with s or, to be, expressions such as caterpreet, to fall prey, are common. s is stated, rather than omitted as in Russian. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.